Ahoy there! You're finally here! I've been waiting for a long time. Even my deck is getting burrs. But this boat? Does this boat even have a deck? This is a dinghy at most! Ha ha ha! Who would have thought the time? The notorious pirate ship, commanded by Akko Domeki, would one day end up like this. So, you're a big pirate ship? Uh, but who's Akko Domeki? What? You don't even know who Akko Domeki is? Akko Domeki Simon? Defender of Sarah! The name of the most feared pirate ever to sail the seas! Oh. Who would have thought? Nope, nope, the name doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> all right, Yutaboru, you told us to come here, so tell us, what is this all about? It feels so weird being called that all of a sudden. Uh, you see, as I said, I'm here because I drifted here. So I'm thinking my original body must be nearby. It feels strange using the word body. <laughs> but I do need to find it as soon as possible. I've lost track of how long I've been sleeping here, but I'm certain my companions will still be waiting for me. I need to find my body, get ship shape, and return to them as soon as possible. Right! <laughs> Aye, but I can't make it here on my own. After all, a talking ship is just a ship. It still needs someone at the wheel. Let's make a deal. You help me find my body, and I will help you find treasure in return. Treasure? I'm a pirate ship after all. Call it a pirate ship's intuition, or some kind of sixth sense. Either way, the moment I woke up, I could sense that this area is filled with valuable treasures. You have my word. A pirate ship always finds its treasure. Ah, or may I be blighted with barnacles? What say, me hearties? Do we have an accord? Let's help me to borrow. If he finds his body and we get treasure in return, everybody wins! So, will you help me or not? Great! Well, there's a place I wanted to go to as soon as I woke up. Based on my pirate ship's intuition, there be some big treasure hidden there. Ah, let's head there and search for it. Time to sit sail!
The sound of nature is so relaxing. There's nothing more to worry about. Sure, what's on your mind? That was days ago. I'm surprised you still remember. Fine drinks belong in the same space as poetry and elegance. To lose myself like that in the tavern? It was truly humiliating. The sound of nature is so relaxed. Sure, what's on your mind? Right, about that. After these events, I suppose I've bid a formal farewell to my past. Don't worry. I feel just as fine as I did during the times before. I am burdened by neither grief nor regret. I appreciate these twists of fate from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Can I take it as a compliment? I'm so happy to have a friend like you. Let's You're just real focus one, back to the scenery in front of us. And take a good look at the clouds and waves before we leave. The sound of nature is so relaxing. Sure, what's on your mind? It's had its ups and downs. But ultimately, it's been quite rewarding. If Beto and the crew ask me about our experiences, I suppose I'll tell them about the squirrel and the ship spirit. As for stories about my new friends, I'll keep them to myself. The end of every journey marks the beginning of a new adventure. I'm sure this is a feeling you are most familiar with. Keep moving forward. That's the important thing. Just like you, I have a lot of hope for the future.
Write this off as incidental gains. The place we to borrow is next is right up there. Okay, let's go check it out. Okay, can we do it? Find anything for you. <laughs> Me to borrow. There's nothing on this island except for a shipwreck. What kind of intuition is that? What? No. Impossible. Ah, I know. It must be because I've been sleeping for too long. And my intuition is not as sharp as it once was. Uh, as the saying goes, nobody's perfect. And certainly no boat's perfect either, right? Cut me a little slack, huh? The next place will be the one. I'm sure the next place will be full of treasure. It better be. No more playing tricks on us this time. You have my word. But, um, the next place is a little far away, and I'm not sure of the precise location. All I know is that it's somewhere northwest of here. But there are so many islands in the northwest! Oh, you gotta give us a little more than that! Wait a minute. If you mean one of the larger islands, there are only two of them in the northwest. Hmm. Now that you mention it, I do sense the cawing of ravens coming from over there. But not just the sound of ravens, no. There be music as well. To be precise, the cawing is coming from the east, and the music is coming from the southwest. So, you're hearing two sounds? Uh, where could this darn treasure be? But where can you hear the sounds from both islands at the same time? Oh, you're right! Yep, that's exactly what Paimon was thinking, too. Ah, then let's go over and take a look. <laughs> ah, you know, I must say, it seems you two are quite close. You bet! We've been on loads of adventures together and Not found lots of treasure before. Ah, if only I'd been able to speak back when we were sailing on the sea, then maybe I would have been able to communicate with my companions just like you two. You seem to have so much fun together. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> All right! Time to find the center location of these two big islands.
this off as incidental gains. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as... Hey, why don't we take a picture of the boat and show it to me, Taboru? 
Then he can confirm whether it's his body or not. Did you find something? Let me guess. You found a huge... Oh, a huge load of nothing. Oh, I dropped the cannonball again, didn't I? Same as last time. Just another shipwreck. Maybe they're parts of your body. We took pictures of them. Take a look. Is this a painting? I don't know you two could paint so well. Just look at the detail. Down to the smallest blade of grass. It's just like the real thing. We didn't paint this. We took it using a camera. So it was drawn by a machine through some high-speed mechanism. So even the mighty pirate ship has never seen a camera before. What are you trying to see? It's not like I haven't seen similar things before. It's just like the hell paintings in all of those legends. But anyway, what's that thing in the middle of this... picture? That's the shipwreck we found. Take a look. Could it be your body? Hmm. Ha! Impossible. Where did this sorry ship come from? It's a total wreck. You may not know this, but I'm considered as the mightiest pirate ship of the Akodomiki fleet. My hull is made of the best wood found on Seirai Island. The edges of my frame boards were refined with folding saws so that the pieces fit together perfectly. Then they were joined together and reinforced with large rivets, making me indestructible. There's no way I could end up like this! But your intuition led us to shipwrecks twice in a row. It's probably because of the special bond between our boats that draws us to one another. Before they run aground, these ships may well have been self-aware too. The remnants of their spirit is most likely what I sensed. Anyway, this can't be my body. My body's probably docked at a hidden port somewhere in these waters. You'll see. My side panels are painted with the finest lacquer. Ah, oh, what a majestic sight I used to be. Once we find it, you'll realize how different I am from this shipwreck in your picture. That sounds great! We should go for a cruise together sometime. Ah, that's for sure. I can't believe I sensed the wrong thing twice in a row. The lack of maintenance has really taken the wind out of my sails as far as my intuition goes. You have to apply coke once in a while if you want a long-lasting voyage. That goes for people, too. What the heck is coke? Is it the glue that holds all the parts of the ship together? Ha <laughs> ha! you're a funny one, aren't you? No, no, but you're but not you're that not far that off. Cock is the stuff we use to fill the gaps between the planks to stop water from leaking into the ship. It's made of rubber or something. Every once in a while, you gotta cock the gaps as part of the maintenance. Exactly. Which reminds me. I got some good rest when you two went on that little adventure. I'm sure I'll be able to sense where the real treasure is now. Third time's the charm. Time to get serious. We'll definitely find something this time. I'm unsure hope so. Anything will do at this point. What's wrong, Paimon? You don't sound like you believe me. Anyway, this time, 
I sense, I sense something, something in the, in the southeast, southeast, on the on sea the surface. surface. It doesn't it does feel like something, something very big. big. And that and raises the chances of it being a small but valuable, valuable item. item. <laughs> Come, on, Come on, let's go. Let's go. Found something this time. Have I finally convinced you of this mighty pirate ship's razor sharp treasure hunting senses? All there was was a bird's nest. So, yeah, technically there were a couple of eggs, uh, but that was all. Oh, just, uh, just the two, you say? Really? So, this is the valuable treasure you were talking about? <clears throat> Pirate, you may not be aware, but the mightier the pirate ship, the longer its voyage at sea, you see. Eventually, the only food available on board is dry fish. At times like this, a couple of bird eggs on a reef nearby can easily become the most valuable treasure to a crew. Meet a Okay, fine. But how the heck did I end up sensing an itch? How strange. I swear I, I, swear I sense I something. But there's nothing else on the reef. Could it be these two planks? Seems like they were used as a shelter. Hmm. Paimon wonders where they came from. <sighs> I know where this plank comes from. Traveler, Paimon, what you saw just now was my own memory. It was my first time sailing on the sea after I was built. The crew used greased planks to create a slipway, then launched me into the water. The thing is, it's really hard to control the angle at which the bow launches onto the water. It could very well break if you're not careful, which is why most people choose to launch the ship sideways instead. These two planks, or should I say, these two side panels, they must have been the first parts of my body to make contact with the water. Mitaboru, um, if your side panels are here, does that mean... Maybe I crashed into the reef here and was shattered to pieces long ago. And maybe the sensation I had when I woke up wasn't some kind of treasure-hunting intuition after all, but me responding to my own body. There I was, 
making fun of that shipwreck, blissfully unaware that I was actually making fun of my own body. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, how embarrassing. We don't know that for sure. Maybe, maybe your body is still in one piece. Yeah, these two plagues are probably just... Uh, um, uh, uh, part of your family tree. Yup, could share the same roots. Even if it's not, there are loads of shipwrecks around here. These planks probably just belong to one of them. But... I... Uh, thank you. Both of you. By the way, Mitaburu, wasn't there something about your name mentioned in that memory? Do you remember your name now? Oh, it's a pity. But I'm afraid I didn't see much more than you did. I still can't recall my name. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, it's not too bad. You and the Traveler can keep calling me Mitoboru. It's a good name. <laughs> of course it is! Paimon picked it after all. So, Mitoboru, is there anywhere else you want to go? Although I can sense two more places, I fear it will be the same situation as before. No treasures, only some driftwood. It doesn't matter. Arr, but I swore there'd be treasure in this deal for you. Hey, it's okay, Mitaburu. We're friends now. Well, in that case, whether it's treasure or not, let's hope you two can find something rather than nothing there. Ha <laughs> ha! Good! Let's go to the closer location first. Treasure here. Paimon knows that. Paimon just can't help feeling a little disappointed. That's all. There's a wooden sword here. It looks like a children's toy. Hey! The thing I sensed. Could it be this wooden sword? Surely it couldn't be a wooden sword. me timbers i remember now the sea battle between akodomiki and the shogunate and then the lightning that came at the end of the battle oh, oh what could it have been will blow me down just a fraction of the thunderbird's wrath and yet still so powerful wait but the lightning came from seirai island traveler have you been there do you know what happened to the island after that No. I can't believe it. It was a truly terrible thunderstorm, it was. Ah, I don't have the words to describe the horror of it. 
We stood up against the Shogunate precisely because we did not want our homeland to be ruled by them. We wanted to protect the people of Seirai Island. We made an enemy of the Shogunate for the sake of Seirai Island. And in the end... Oh, Shrine Maiden. Why? Wait. So that thunderstorm was the reason I... The reason I drifted here. I... I was terribly injured in that storm. My whole body was falling apart. It took all my strength to get here. Ah, Mitaburu. But what about the wooden sword? What does this have to do with it? This wooden sword is made from my broken timber. Zaimon once seized a sword-wielding Magu with his barbed spear. The Magu drifted here with us. The wooden sword was probably crafted by local children imitating the Magu's sword. The body of the mighty pirate ship that once fought against the Shogunate, now reduced to a children's toy of all things. Arr, my mind is awash with strange and complex feelings. So, Mitaboru, should we take this with us? After all, it is a part of you. No, there's no point taking this now. <laughs> Young scallywags. The little landlubbers got me this time. <sighs> Although it's disappointing now that I remember the truth, somehow I feel relieved, too. At least I know what happened. I won't be deceiving myself with my wishful thinking any longer. The only thing I'm worried about now is my old mateys who drifted here with me. I wish I could know how they're doing. Aye, let's hope so. Okay, there's one last place. I can feel it. It's the last piece of my body. that house on the beach. Wait. Why a house? Don't tell me some landlubbers turned me into furniture. There are a lot of wooden planks on this conch house, but they don't look like what we're after. Oh! Could it be the one on the stone? What is it, though? A board nailed onto two wooden strips with a wooden mallet next to it? This is a musical instrument? Uh, can it really make a decent sound? Why don't we try it out first before giving it to Mitaboru? Pretty sure this instrument hasn't been repaired in a long time. Well, this must be the last fragment of Mitaboru's body. Come on, let's go tell him. You're back. How did it go? Did you find anything? This is indeed my last piece. But what the festering fish bait have they turned me into this time? We think it's a musical instrument, but it hasn't been fixed for a while, so you can't really play anything with it. Is that so? Ah, a pity to be sure. Musical instrument. <laughs> I never imagined that my broken body could be used to play music. It makes me think of my old mates. They used to sing when the mood took them. 
They'd sit by the beach facing the campfire. Uh, hey! What kind of sound does this instrument make? Why don't you give it a try? Uh, it hasn't been caulked for a long time, so it might not sound as good as you're hoping. It doesn't matter. Satisfy my curiosity. Just strike it and see what happens. Arr. So, they found a way back. Aye, but since I was so badly damaged, it was the most I could do to bring them here. There was no way I could go back with them. Ah, oh, it gladdens me hearts to know that they are safe. But I... Even though I said goodbye to them, I still can't help thinking, what if I could have gone back with them? Oh, how I wish we had returned together. With them, I would have been willing to go anywhere, no matter how dangerous. There are so many grand adventures for us to go on. So many treasures out there in the world, waiting for us to discover them. Why did I have to be left here, abandoned like this? I could do nothing but watch them leave and embark on a new journey without me. Laugh when you feel like crying, and press on when you feel like giving up. That's how you survive out on the ocean. Anyway, thank you for helping me remember all of this. Thank you kindly. I'm afraid, though, that they seem to have taken most of the treasure with them when they left. Yeah! In a way, all the things you sensed really were invaluable treasures. To you, at least. Hi, it's true. Tis a shame I can't repay your kindness. As a ship, there's only so much I can do. But, um, in the future, if I ever need your help again... We'll be here for you whenever you need us, Mitaboru. Right? Fantastic. Thank you both. And if you ever voyage in these seas again, I will be your trusty companion. Didn't Mitsuburu say he wanted to meet us? Let's go find him and see what it's about.
Knights and aristocrats share the same cultural heritage, but the knights had enough sense to do away with all the superfluous detail. Ahoy! Here you are! I thought you'd be too busy flying around the islands with those wings of yours. Bet you've long forgotten your old mate Mitoboru sitting there slowly soaking away in the ocean. We're here now, aren't we? So you said you needed our help. What's up? It's not that important. Remember when you helped me find the missing pieces of my body? How can I put it? I'm not sure if it's because I've fulfilled my wishes, or if these waters are slowly diminishing my ability to talk. Recently, I find myself sleeping most of the time, rather than staying conscious. I see. So it's because of some contraption that I became your wave rider and could communicate with you. Once the effects of the machine wear off, Mitaburu won't be able to talk anymore? We gotta do something before it's too late! Ha <laughs> ha! There'll be no need for that, Paimon. I am quite content that I had the chance to talk to you at all. Arr, the more I think about it, for me as a ship to have gotten to talk to you in the past few days, it really is a wondrous thing. The stuff dreams are made of. But no, I need to ask you for one more favor. Remember when I told you that once we found my body, I'd take you for a cruise? Well, it seems my body was reduced to a slew of sorry shipwrecks. And most of the treasure was taken away, leaving nothing good for you. But this time, I swear... As a mighty pirate ship, there be treasure ahoy, and a fine treasure at that. Or else may I be strangled by seagrass and fed to the fish. Just trust me one last time. Well, since Mitsuburu probably won't be able to speak soon, and since there really is treasure this time, let's go! Ah, come on then, me hearties. Time to come aboard. Aristocratic etiquette is all just for show. Just smile and nod along. I was forced to learn all of the rules by heart, but even I don't take them that seriously.
You want to learn some Favonia's blade work? <laughs> all right, then. I'll teach you. Oh, yes. I'll teach you all right. Mark my word. all of a sudden oh wow look there's a lot more lights on the sea those lights are from inazuma i haven't seen them for many a year follow them they look just like fishing lanterns i feel like i'm back in the ported sea ride with the fishing boats even pirates don't get to go on adventures every day when he had free time zaimon would take us out fishing he would harpoon fish with his barbed spear. I never saw him miss once. You have the catch with you, don't you? I've sensed it for some time now. Ah, those were good times. I'm sure he's still sailing across the sea, charting a course towards his dreams. Oh, oh, I just remembered. I've got two things to tell you. First of all, I've remembered my name. Wow. So, Mitsuboru? No, wait. Um, so, uh, Mr. Chip? What's your real name? The maiden of Asase Shrine named me Koseki Maru. Most of my maids were from Koseki Village, and she hoped I could take them back to their hometown. Koseki Maru? Hmm. Paimon still prefers Mitsuboru. Kimaro is a nice name, too. But I... I failed them. If only I could have been stronger, I might have been able to survive the thunderstorm and make it back to Koseki Village with my friends safe and sound. just like the one on that day. And so were the Inazuman lights we saw, too. Is this all happening because of me? Festering fish mate. I'm going to drag everyone down with me. Come on, Michi! Aye, oh, you're right. I am the proud Koseki Maru. Pirate ship under the command of the mighty pirate, Ako Domiki. The wood of sailor I made me flesh and bones. And the shrine made in Amasasa gave me my name. I have sailed the seas for decades, never once leaving my friends behind. Even when fighting the strongest foes, I never feared nor faltered. A little thunder and lightning can't stop me. Ha! Watch me breeze through. Talking ship is still just a ship. The traveler's superb sailing skill was what saw us safely through the storm. <laughs> I'd rather not. <sighs> I'm afraid I may have triggered the thunderstorm. These waters are less stable than they once were. But we've arrived. Traveler, Paimon, the treasure is right up there. Isn't this the place we first visited when we were looking for treasure? There was nothing here but half of Kosi Kamaro's hole. I am certain that there's treasure up there this time. It's... What did I call it again? 
It's the intuition of a mighty pirate ship. Wait a minute. You said you had two things to tell us, right? And the first one was that you'd remembered your name. What was the other one? <laughs> I thought you'd already forgotten. I'll tell you when you come back. Surely the treasure should be near Cozy Kamaro's shipwreck. Let's go and check it out. Kosikamaru? Uh, but he said he'd tell us when we returned! Kosikamaru, you're a big fat liar! I want to help.
Pleasure to be working with you. Ready for trial. Need to end a few enemies? some rest. Last one. Thank you. 
No time to lose.
I wonder what the rest of the Harbingers are up to. Flotting and scheming on an ever grander scale, no doubt.
this place is pretty dead. By which I mean, there's nothing to kill. No time to lose. No time to lose. Thank you. 
No time to lose. No time to lose. Stay clear. You can run, but you can't hide. Wrap up the flame.
Shouldn't let your guard down. Sakura swirl! Animal test 6308. Take flight. Stay close and you will live. Sure. I'll scout ahead. I charge a higher rate. Unsolicited, and all the more valuable for it. Stabilize! Shine down! Motion to compel! Crush! Yeah. Uh, huh. 
Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Where do you want to go next? If you'd like to see Liu Wei's talk.
Osmanthus wine tastes the same.
More speed.
certainly worth the extra mile. to compel. condition.
This is order. Shut up. <laughs> 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 Huh. <laughs>
Solidify! Illusion shatter! Time for your arraignment! Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. 
But where are those who share the memory? More speed. <laughs> More speed. <laughs> More speed. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome! You must be the world-famous Traveler, and this must be the Traveler's best companion, Paimon! Wow! How did you know our names? You are the island's most distinguished guests! Of course I know who you are! After all, I am... You are... I am the world-famous head of Twilight Theater! world-famous, but we've never heard of you. It's fine. Now you have. After a painstaking amount of work, our play, Tale of the Sword-Wielding Princess, is finally ready for the stage. There are five acts in this play, each with two scenes. 
My distinguished guests, you have come at the perfect time! The show is about to start! Please take a seat! I, uh, still need to take care of something backstage. Please excuse me. You are about to witness the debut of Twilight Theater's best ever play. Please sit back and enjoy. Upon hearing of human dreams precious as gold, an insatiable evil dragon descended upon the kingdom. Oblivious to this ill, the king and his princess continued to debate the content of their meal. Meat or vegetable, though the princess' most loyal servant would have proposed both to end the squabble. But few knew his name, and fewer still cared for his counsel. And then the evil dragon appeared. You want to learn some Favonia's blade work? <laughs> all right then, I'll teach you. Oh yes, I'll teach you all right. Mark my word. Aristocratic etiquette is all just for show. Just smile and nod along. I was forced to learn all of the rules by heart, but even I don't take them that seriously. You want to learn some Favonia's blade work? <laughs> all right then, I'll teach you. Oh yes, I'll teach you all right. Mark my word. Dreams 
like gold. I wonder if they will be flavorful. Oh, these uneven tiles on the ground knock the wind out of my sails. Ah, good, very good. Though you are puny, you harbor dreams grand enough for myself. Be gone, evil dragon. Evil dragon? How laughable. A dragon as illustrated and thoughtful as myself should surely be granted enlightened as a title. My kin are known to covet treasure, yet I have found the dreams of puny man more enticing than jewels. It is most spectacular how man can stuff their minds with dreams, whether they be starving or full. Human dreams are more precious than gold, or so they say. Today I will see for myself if your dreams are indeed as filling as they are valuable. My hunger wears away at my control. I must feast as soon as possible. Puny king, if you value your own life and those of your kin, then offer up thy sacrifice thereupon! Aristocratic etiquette is all just for show. Just smile and nod along. I was forced to learn all of the rules- To see me as a coward? Are your vile eyes mere reflective stones? Dreams and nobility are my lifelong pursuits. I will not give them up for you. Be gone, evil dragon. The kingdom won't cower before you. I must urge that you reconsider, though courage fills your measly soul. Which choice is more favorable between sacrifice and annihilation? Some time will surely show. <sighs> I will find some rest in your city outskirts, but before nightfall, I will return for my fill. If you fail to give, then I will take for myself. Your palace shall be my hunting grounds, and your halls my stove. One man's stone is another man's gem. Convinced that the king will in time provide a delicious meal, the hubristic dragon departed the castle for a short break. The righteous king had no intention to yield and planned to call upon his banners to conquer evil. I will defeat the dragon to protect our kingdom. My child, you forget yourself. A princess cannot march. Your place is not in battle, but within the boudoir. I have not forgotten your teachings. I cannot give up dreams and nobility. I should walk freely among our people, as a princess, but also as a warrior. With the dragon outside, I cannot just sit still. You are a princess first. Moreover, I cannot bear to see you step into danger. Furthermore, you... <laughs> Rest assured, Your Majesty. By my side, her safety will be secure. 
with no name or honor, how do you propose to protect her? Alas, say no more. I will summon the bravest warriors of the land to ride beside her. There were three celebrated warriors in the realm, each endowed with great gifts and known for skill spectacular. All waited patiently outside the palace, eager to step into the throne room. The forger of great legacies, the world-famous fighter, Attendant A. His glory is resplendent, and his travels the epics of the day. Within the realm, only the most ignorant have not heard of the hero, or given him acclaim. Say you didn't know? Here, I'll tell you all about my name. The often indecisive and overcautious tactician, Attendant B. Specialist in surviving any and everything in one piece. Is he paranoid or simply meticulous? No consensus exists. A phenomenal plan takes time to formulate. Use your brain, not your fists. A phenomenal plan takes time to formulate. Use your brain, not your fists. You think I'm afraid? D don't discount my field expertise. And finally, our preeminent Dragon Slayer, Attendant C. Dragon Slaying is a piece of cake, if you must ask me. The Slayer recounted his many legends, showcasing spoils for all to see. See, this cloak has a very colorful history. Please, listen carefully. The warriors have arrived. Ah, they are ready to fight. Their names are so long and complicated. Why is that? To project shock and awe, people often exaggerate their deeds. I must be ignorant. I I've never heard of such a trend. Welcome, brave warriors. May you persevere and prevail against the obstacles ahead. And those that come across Leo. I swear upon all my past glory, a triumph for our princess is at hand. The princess need not fear with me by her side. The dragon will fall in no time. Uh, a dragon poses no threat. My plan will make it flee with its tail between its legs. Friends, you make fair points, but you may not even have to fight. My slaying prowess is acclaimed throughout our land. The dragon will tremble and scram. So, accompanied by her loyal servant, as well as the three famed warriors, the princess set out on her quest. Unsolicited, and all the more valuable for it. Hi, man. Traveler, what did you think? Please tell me your thoughts. Terrific! Anyway, please stay tuned. There are four more acts in this play, and they'll be shown on various stages on the island. Don't miss out on the best show of Twilight Theater. You can watch the middle three acts in any order before the final act. 
And when the final act begins, please hold your breath for the grand decisive battle. Stay tuned. He says there are four more acts after this. If we see a stage on the island, shall we go check it out? <laughs> Outside of the city gates, there lies a blessed stretch of prairie by the lake, with lush vegetation and a gentle, pleasant breeze. Seeking some time to rest, the wicked dragon landed with ease. Across and so far away, the castle as if a bird in a cage. Have the humans finished preparing my meal, or do they yet believe they can defy their fate? A lake across and so far away, the castle as if a bird in a cage. Have the humans finished preparing my meal, or do they yet believe they can defy their fate? The sun is high and the land scorching. In the interest of comfort, I will seek a more accommodating base. For one promised moment of unrivaled taste, I have traveled for hundreds of miles and hungered over dozens of days. The humans better not exhaust my patience, for even I have never had unlimited grace. Having spoken thus, the dragon sought relief in the shade, yet forthwith, from the other direction, a merchant came. Where do you want to go next? If you'd like to see Liu Wei's tourist spots, I have a few references. Ugh, what rotten luck to get scammed before even concluding a single sale. I am a merchant who has traveled a very long way. Is this how this kingdom deals with trades? Throughout my entire career, I've never encountered a customer as loud or strange as this man today. To him, everything I have for sale is either a manipulative scheme for money or undeserving trifles of heinous quality. To think I even mistook him for some kind of connoisseur, when at the end of it all, he only made a fool of me. He never cared to close a sale. He just saw me as a challenge and refused to be defeated. As the merchant stewed over his anger, yet another irritated soul came onto the scene. Darn it! Why is this guy getting in my way? My quest is to track the dragon. I don't have time to waste. As an adventurer, defeating evil is my calling. Just the thought of him makes me enraged. All I said was that I've never heard of him, and he's treating that like the biggest mistake. Insulting me? Claiming I want to steal his glory? 
and suggesting my quest is just a ploy. Evil dragon, show yourself! Resistance is futile! That's him! Oh, that must be him! One man's stone is another man's gem. Humans are truly a rude and rowdy lot. To think they can cause such a ruckus without even showing their faces. The man in pursuit is the kingdom's famed fighter. Though the sun continues to blaze, he continues spiritedly with his chase. <laughs> it would seem that my boundless fame has caused even the evil dragon to lose its nerve. As an enlightened dragon, one cannot tolerate such deranged words. Aha! Evil dragon! I didn't believe you would actually come out and face me! The puny human talks big and employs an aggressive tone. Yet does the substance of his dream back up his claim? Oh. Hmm. Oh, and the beast is silent! Is my dream so grand that even a dragon finds it difficult to consume? As the noble warrior faced off against the evil dragon, the anxious princess and her entourage arrived at last. The nameless servant kept his eyes on the field. The warrior's words have ignited a fire within his heart. Huh. Is there a show on? Or... Well, whatever. I, I need to get home. How did I get here? Oh, no. My wife's waiting for me to cook dinner. I admire his fearless figure. It would be a dream to also one day prove my character. Evil dragon, why do you not speak? Have you finally realized you should cower in fear? I care not for those who are lesser. Your dream is massive, yet hollow in nature. For now, this wick, enlightened dragon still cannot decide if it's fit to eat. Oh, how vile of you to humiliate me! Just because I'm an enemy! I regarded you as a worthy opponent, yet you use such insidious tactics! I, the world-famous fighter, will never fall before your degradation and trickery! You disgust me! The fighter's animated speech kindled a burning flame within even the oft-dispassionate heart of the royal lady. I am long tired of my peaceful boudoir. I wish to fight alongside my soldiers. I am long tired of my peaceful boudoir. I wish to fight alongside my soldiers. Though one sees little reason to teach a lesson, perhaps no choice is left in the matter. Too many appetizers before the dish ruins the mood, but just for today, I can entertain an early platter. To everyone's shock, the evil dragon then swallowed the fighter's dream in one big gulp. 
It is just as I thought. Thin and crunchy, though empty under its shell. A most marvelous texture. The warrior was handily defeated. So he was a gifted orator, but never a true fighter. Conceit became his downfall. His power did not match his stature. The dragon remained unsatiated. Under everyone's gaze, it flew away to parts unfamiliar. Unsolicited, and all the more valuable for it. Solidify! Shine down! Beg for mercy. I can put these to good use. Still vowing to defeat the dragon, the princess followed the trail. The servant continued at his pace, shouldering all burdens without fail. Though the slayer scorned the servant, the loyal man paid it no mind. If I bore his tools and freed his mind, perhaps a victory he shall find. He bears the sword of destiny, the blade of the chosen one. He will raise it before the dragon, and victory will follow in time. As if hearing his thoughts, the dragon descended upon a village. Dragon, no one would laugh at you if you were to flee in fear. The human realizes not how comical he and his words appear. Wise and merciful as I am, I will refrain from taking the bait. However, I pray you will live to regret what you say. <laughs> For a dull human, you sure have a sharp tongue. Let's see it then, if among heroes you truly belong. The princess has also finally caught up with her attendants. It should be my duty to banish the dragon. Your Highness, your permission to charge? 
With my blade and extensive experience, I will take this dragon apart. Permission granted. Be on your guard. I once slew a poisonous dragon and took this most precious reward. This cloak lets me evade any type of regard. I will bide my time and find the moment to strike the heart. Every jerk. Ah, and here I thought you were privy to some special art. <sighs> Did you plan to flee all along and have only been waiting for a chance to depart? Hmm? If the Slayer put on his cloak and walked into the crowd, who would be able to tell him apart? Dragon, how dare you slander my name! Despite my patience and mercy, you have shown no shame. Bitter regret will be yours after I take aim. By all means, please go on. This enlightened one cannot wait to play your game. L let's take it over there. Silently acknowledging the request, the dragon twisted its features into a benevolent smile. Certainly worth the extra mile. In a flash, the dragon landed at the promised place. The princess and her loyal servant immediately followed apace. But the slayer remained rooted in place, as he somehow lost his faith. Evil dragon, you'll see what I'm made of! I've climbed mountains, crossed lakes, traversed dungeons, and defeated your kin. To finally obtain this sword, the Blade of Fate. Leave now, otherwise this razor-sharp blade will cut you into pieces. <laughs> what must be a shining myth to you is but trivial babble to me. I will settle and not even move two feet. Attack as you please. Simple villagers gathered to witness the scene. Many were fascinated by the blade's myth. A farmer came forward to try out the blade. But others wondered if hands that had only held a pitchfork could even grasp the hilt. I consider myself a fit man. A match for knights from the palace. I consider myself a fit man. A match for knights from the palace. I thought I was strong enough, but I couldn't even shake it. The farmer used all his strength, but the sword remained in place. As for the princess and her servant, they also declined to try their faith. The dragon observed intently, but its patience finally wore away. Alas, I've grown tired of words and charades. When will a puny human finally save the day? Take the blade and strike me down, if you mean what you say. Uh, a mighty dragon slayer shan't do your bidding. A 
Dragon Slayer, you are but a charlatan. Drop your pretense and ask the child. Even he can see through you. Could the dragon's words be true? And there is no true dream under those layers of armor. Hey, it's been all talk and no fight, and give us a fight! Huh? Why am I on stage? Why is everyone staring at me? <laughs> A dragon bigger than those from the rhymes, but I won't be scared. That shiny armor, why does it click? His mouth is open, why does he not speak? Though I'm not hungry, the snack's been delivered straight to my door. The dragon's huge mouth instantly swallowed the Slayer's dream. Mm. It's just as I expected. Long rotten dreams make for terrible food. This bad apple taste. What a disgrace. The Slayer was also defeated. So the tales of past battles did not hold up. The dragon again departed the scene, leaving only the bewildered slayer in his wake. Unsolicited, and all the more valuable for it. my most loyal attendant. Why, certainly. I bestow upon thee permission to ask any questions. Oh, you have witnessed the theater of the Holy Land? 
All right, out with it. Be liberal with your words of praise. It is a singular achievement in all the world. Bean Fräulein eagerly anticipates your comments. <laughs> Greetings, my boy, certainly. I bestow a... It is the sacred scripture of the Imanakreish. It must never be allowed to fall into disrepair from a lack of upkeep. Hmm. You'd better. In Main Fräulein's mind, it is a treasured memento of this journey. She is positively thrilled to know that you also see it as such. Oz, do not overinterpret my speech. <laughs> Greetings, why certainly. I bestow upon the one was most delighted to behold the grand ceremony and celebration with which one's official excursion to this blessed land was received. Alas, my journey through countless worlds has taught me that even the most splendid of things must come to an end. This is why I have declared to my people that my excursion goes on, as there are still attendants from faraway lands who require the princess's royal assistance. Main Fräulein cried when she bade farewell to everyone. Oz, I told you. That was only because an insolent grain of sand rudely took refuge in my eyes. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Huh? <gasps> 
Certainly worth the extra money. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stabilize. Order guide you. There is no escape. Shut up. More speed. The dragon flew off and briefly rested at the gate. Where are the guards? Are they too terrified to face their fate? As the evil dragon made no attempt to move or hide, the princess and her entourage quickly arrived. The princess loyal knight was the first to spot the creature, for he always rode far ahead. How dare the dragon be insolent as such? I pledge before the king to not let the princess come to harm. Mayhap our tactician can succeed with his wits and charm. Legends have it that he's the ultimate survivor. If he can ward against dangers with fastidious care, we need not recklessly suffer. Without a plan, we should not pull the trigger. The loyal servant passed the message in a voice barely higher than a whisper. While the evil dragon rests, we will draw up a plan. Upon those words, she approached carefully so the dragon would ignore her steps. The tactician is correct. We require a plan before we fight. Thanks to my servant's farsighted work, we have seized the initiative. Oh, your highness honors me. I was simply doing my duty. Placing the saddle on the right horse is the way of the world. Take your praise with pride. The tactician has fallen behind. Why does he falter? Did he get entangled in a struggle? He promised to quell all draconic cataclysms. Perhaps he is torn between myriad schemes. Through all faith and cynicism, the cautious tactician remained silent, his face one of dismay and gloom. It tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. 
But where are those who share the memory? Where do you want to go next? If you'd like to see Liyue's tourist spots, I have a few references. Boats are made for transferring commodities back and forth, and those that come across Liyue tend to stay a while, so it is where many things come to settle. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory?
Oh, tactician, the dragon beckons. Please enlighten us about the stratagem. Stratagem? Uh, no stratagem can be perfected so quickly for a situation this grave. More time is vital. <laughs> this merciful enlightened one shall grant thee all the time in the world. Only at dusk will I call the dust to settle. Hark! The evil dragon speaks! It was simply feigning sleep to lure us into peril! Attendant B shook where he stood, stopping just short from falling to his knees. He muttered and apologized, then ran away to the gate without hesitation. One man's stone is another man's gem. The princess and her loyal servant rushed off to find him, while the dragon broke into laughter. <laughs> if the king had chosen to appease me, I wouldn't have been able to enjoy such a scene. Leaving behind her tactician-seeking servant, the princess returned alone to keep the dragon under guard. A mirage belies the tactician's wisdom. What may I call on to keep my kingdom safe? The element of surprise fades. The dragon now lies calmly in wait. The tactician has lost his nerve, yet my servant followed in pursuit. Shockingly, open city gates greet me where guards should have stood. An old guard arrived. Though he was quite visibly drunk, his footsteps were surprisingly steady. <laughs> if you ask me, this time of peace is truly fantastic. What with food and wine and beauty. The aristocrats had never known our hardships. The, the searing sun and the chilling wind. Psh, dragons, tacticians, pff, what a boatload of nonsense. My eyes are dim now, and my ears ring. Why did they send me out to the front lines to take on a dragon? Though the young guard learned much from his senior, he hasn't forgotten his wish to defend the kingdom. F for the princess, I must fight! With everyone gone, I am the last line of defense. I must save the kingdom from... from... Uh, oh, my belly. No, not right now. <sighs> did, did he just run off? Must have been the food. The show must go on. Should I find someone to take his place? waste such a great opportunity if only it was me I've always wanted to perform in a show but I never got the chance wait isn't this just perfect well 
I've seen them rehearse, but I'm still not a real actor. But you are a real guard. The other guy suddenly disappeared just as he got to... I am the last line of defense! We can't let that stand. As a guard, isn't it also your duty to protect the audience's wish to enjoy the play? That's true, but... It's always been your dream to perform on a stage. People are waiting. There's no time to hesitate. Let's bring him over! Uh, my line should be... Uh, my line should be... Look here, dragon! <laughs> very well, very well. Let this enlightened one see if you have any battle prowess to back up that shout. Uh, the loyal servant finally returned just as the terrible fight was about to break out. The tactician's trail fades, but the guard should carry his weight. No, I should have led him into battle. I was still way too late. The late arrival let out a resigned sigh, even as the dragon raised the stakes. Though the young guard fought with valor, the cunning dragon still snapped up the prize in one take. <laughs> if I had worked harder during training, I wouldn't feel so helpless today. This wine tastes the same as I remember. Though my appetite remains healthy, you did well to quench my cravings. The portions were modest, yet the taste remained rather satisfying. If the appetizers had already entertained me so, surely the main dish would cast a spell. Thus again satisfied, the proud dragon licked its mouth and leisurely flew off. Certainly worth the extra mile. My most distinguished guests, please hear me. I'm sure you have watched the first four acts. I hope you've been enjoying the show. The stage is now set for the final act. Oh, I'm so excited I could cry. There is still something I need to follow up with backstage. I am terribly sorry that I cannot escort you to the final stage personally. But I'll see you there. The sun's about to set, and the moon soon to rise. Our time is almost up, but evil survives. The famed attendants all took on the dragon, but they fell one by one. I made a vow when all of this began, but now I fear my vow has become a farce. As her most loyal servant, I should share her worries. I am a nobody, but thanks to her, I was given a place. 
Nevertheless, I admire the princess's diligence and kindness. Please, don't dwell in sadness. We can reflect on the trio's mistakes. Your counsel is valid. Let me recall their words and deeds. An inflated ego, yet falling at the first hurdle. The princess remembered what she'd seen. I fancied myself a fighter, but my enemy saw right through me. I overestimated my ability. I couldn't win against a strong enemy, but I also clung hard to my conceit. I lacked respect, because I feared others wouldn't respect me. A dream that was massive in size, yet hollow inside. Lots of guts, but no ability. A supposedly foolproof plan, yet with no one to see it through. The princess remembered again. To protect myself, I ran away and let others take my place. All my plans evaporated when I saw the dragon in front of me. I did survive everything, but every time I did so by abandoning those standing next to me. He was a tactician with neither morals nor strategy. It's natural to be cautious. But one who abandons their comrades is no hero. Avoiding the present and only speaking endlessly of past glories, the princess remembered one last time. My past has proved my deeds. My laurels should now be able to speak for me. To give my life now would be foolish. It's elementary to balance risk and benefits. His past has faded. All he has now is his former glory. The spirit has decayed. He has long forgotten the taste of his dream. Ah. Oh. If they all failed to defeat the dragon, then I... With only my dream and my rapier, how can I possibly defeat the dragon? Though I am but a lowly bystander in the palace, I know you to be humble and grounded. You are never selfish or merciless. All know you for your eagerness and diligence, your dreams that are no less than gold. Your Highness, please don't underestimate yourself. Believe in your golden ideals. And that you will slay that dream-devouring dragon for good. I can put these to good use. It is almost night. The dragon has changed its name to the Starving One. I've had snack after snack, but dinner still eludes me. Snacks are distractions. In the end, they have no true substance. What's more, some of these just made me feel... sick. I'm afraid only a true golden dream can sufficiently quench my cravings.
The loyal servant approached quietly to observe the dragon. For the princess, he will do any and everything. For my promise to the king. But also, to make her happy. Even if it seems impossible. Huh? The dragon looks strange. Why is it covering its chest? Let's hear what it's mumbling. I shouldn't have underestimated the humans. Or been so gluttonous. Now that my stomach is churning, I have no strength left to face off against the king. Overjoyed, the loyal servant rushed back to share the news. My heart is full of courage. I will wield my rapier with pride. Look! There's a spot above its heart that isn't covered by scales! Take it down while it's still weak. Evil dragon, I challenge thee to protect my kingdom! <sighs> Filthy human! With a fearless thrust, the princess fulfilled her pledge. The world opens itself before those who do not forget their dreams and nobility. Thank you as well, my loyal servant. You deserve a fitting reward. In light of our recent trials, I will name you... The Shatterer of Despair, Flugel de Dunkelheit, servant of the Princessin de Veratilum. Finally, the princess personally defeated the dragon, and peace returned to the kingdom. All praise, all praise. Certainly worth the extra money. <laughs> The show was a resounding success. Our thanks to all of the actors and actresses, and our thanks to everyone who came in to support us. Oh, of course, we must thank you as well, Traveler and Paimon. I really appreciated your undivided attention. Oh, <laughs> it felt just like the relentlessly piercing gaze of the evil dragon. Oh, uh, yes, the title is Tale of the Sword-Wielding Princess. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's just like how the five Kassen are usually portrayed in four poems. Well, anyway, the important thing is not the sword in the hand, but the courage in the heart. Back to business. Now that the curtains have closed, I would like to take this rare opportunity to invite the Traveler and Paimon to take a photo with the crew. Please don't refuse. Come on. Is everyone ready? Three, two, one. Yay! Whoa! Tone down the excitement, buddy! Are you sure that the photo is fine? It's totally fine. A commemoration picture could always benefit from a dose of quirkiness. Thank you again, Traveler and Paimon. Ah, oh, summer. Wonderful summer. Ah, oh, the good times never last. I wish times like this would be like a show that never ends.
want to go next. If you'd like to see Liu Wei's tourist spots, I have a few references. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Boats are made for transferring commodities back and forth, and those that come across Liyue tend to stay a while, so it is where many things come to settle. Where do you want to go next? If you'd like to see Liu Wei's tourist spots, I have a few references. <laughs> 